Hello friends, Susan Campfield here with SueStampfield.com. I'm a little late tonight. I am so sorry. Thank you for your patience. Thanks for hanging out with me. Welcome to my stamp room. Come on in, relax, grab a beverage. I have no beverage. Hmm. Might be one across the room. I think there is. I think there is. After last video, I'm not sure I'm allowed <laughs> to have a beverage. Uh, if you joined me on Saturday night, you witnessed me spilling my water all over my stamp desk. So hello everyone. I'm reading the comments a little bit. It sounds like uh, YouTube has done some changing. Don't we love it when uh, when things change? Not, not so much, right? Uh, Jennifer looks like she is on top of it. So I hope it's not too distracting, whatever the issue is. I'm using a different way to get into uh, this live stream because I'm streaming on both Facebook and on YouTube. So I don't see what you're seeing right now, but I'll check it out later. So hopefully it's okay, everyone. Thanks for being here. So glad that you're here. Oh my gosh, I've got so much to share. We're just going to like dive right in, friends. First of all, I wanted to tell you, geez, Susan, hang on. <laughs> I was like, I need to grab those and I didn't grab them. Um, I just sent out just maybe an hour ago, the project sheet uh, email. So we've got project sheets for this beautiful, a missing middle card that we did on uh, last week. <laughs> what day is this? Um, and then we have a uh, project sheet for this gorgeous um, uh, textured floral card uh, with the match. This is an offset gatefold card that we did in a previous video that Sam will look to. I um, can't tell which way the camera is, so it opens up like that. Um, so these two cards, uh, the project sheets to make these, are out in Cyberland. Hopefully they've made their way to you. If you haven't subscribed yet and you would like to, I actually put these two project sheets on the welcome email. So if you decide to sign up for the, the uh, free project sheets, which you can do at suestampfield.com and click on subscribe, you'll get a welcome email that will have these two uh, project sheets if you are doing it um, around this time, which is August, end of August, 2023. Where did August go, friends? Oh my gosh, it's just gone. So um, lots to share. I recently just got back. What day is this? This is Tuesday. Uh, late Sunday night, I got home from Las Vegas for the Stampin'. I was there for the Stampin' Up backstage leadership training, which was amazing. And I went a little bit early and uh, got some relaxing in. So at the bottom of the email that I sent out, there's a whole ton of pictures. Sorry about that. I, I was going to pick just a few and it was just too hard. So I shared more than I meant to, but um, thank you for letting me share what I've been up to. Um, it's always fun to, to share that with you. So um, let's Thank you so much. I see some of you say that saying that you did receive it. So yay, I made it to your inbox. Awesome. So I've got lots to share. I've got some happy mail that I received. And then I got a cool swap that you guys, I was going to ask you if you wanted me to make it. And I'm like, of course, they, yes, they're going to want me to make it. We're going to figure it out together. So i um, got a really cool swap. And uh, so we're going to make that card. And then I've got other some other swap cards. We'll see how we go timing wise. Um, and hopefully I'll get to share some of those too. If not, I can share them next time. So, oh goodness, Fonda, you are in the trajectory for the hurricane. Uh, prayers out to our friends on the East Coast and down in Florida. Um, hope you're well and I hope uh, hope it backs off from what they're predicting. But uh, stay safe, everyone. Um, let's go ahead and drop to the desk here and I'm going to show you some things. Let's get this party started. Marsha Long says, any new products? Um, any new products? What, Marsha? Um, uh, you mean, am I showing any new products tonight? Or uh, give me more, more, give me more, <laughs> more context. Keep in mind, my brain is fried. Oh, look, we have a messy desk. Well, isn't that just just like us, right? So um, I'm going to start with some happy mail. I uh, got some cards, some beautiful cards in the mail. Just wanted to uh, give a shout out to this one is for my team member, Mabel, Mabel Gwen. She got the doily and she, um, she sent me this card. How gorgeous is that with a dainty delight? So, so sweet of her. Um, thank you so much, Mabel. And then I got some happy mail from my team member, 
Patty Edelman down in Texas. Patty sent me this gorgeous card. Look, she even, look, 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 I got to show you the envelope. She even did some of the DSP. So this is the Countryside Inn Designer Series paper. She color matched the envelope flap. And then I believe this is, um, she used the Countryside, oh, what's it called, friends? Uh, countryside Corners um, die and stamps. And then she also used, I think it's the Paper Pumpkin um, that coordinated with this kit. So isn't there a new product in, in the online exclusives? Um, there will be uh, some new product in the online exclusives on September 6th, some new designer series paper. Um, so this is just a very sweet, sweet card about my 26 year anniversary. So thank you so much, Patty Edelman. And then we've got one more. Uh, if Stampin' Up! showed new products coming, oh, at the backstage event. Um, no, but they did give us leaders uh, a peek yesterday at some new papers that are going to be in the online exclusives. So um, very, very fun stuff. Um, this one is from, oh, it's from Jody. This is from Jody, one of my customers. Look how cool this one is, guys. All right, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to figure this one out. I think she said it's a floating. What's it called? Floating accordion fold. Look at that! Like this part pops up, like kind of like a table, and then it floats and it stands for display. Pretty awesome. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to figure this out. So there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the card we're going to make tonight. And we are copying, <laughs> we are going to copy this card. So um, this uh, card was gifted to me. Actually, it wasn't, I was out of swaps. Um, it was gifted to me by Connie Ingram is the demonstrator that made it. Now, Connie, you might remember her last year at the Backstage Leadership Conference. I swapped with her or maybe she gifted me that card too. Um, and it was a, a witch and the legs on the witch swung. And so I showed you guys the swap. You asked me to make it. We figured it out. We made it following Connie's instructions. And then I did a gnome with swinging a dancing gnome card with the same uh, mechanism. So she has done her magic again. And this one is a swinging ornament. How cute is that? So fun, right? So thank you, Connie and Graham. We're going to go ahead and make a... Um, slightly different version of this card. Um, we're going to figure out this mechanism underneath. Think of the possibilities of different things that could swing because I think we might need to do a couple more cards in another video. I'm wondering about a skeleton with swinging legs. What do you guys think? Um, if we can make it work, <laughs> right? So this one is gorgeous. Now this one is um, actually a stamp set that is back in stock. So this one is part of the online exclusives. It's called So Very Merry. Um, it came out for about a hot second <laughs> before it sold out um, earlier. Gosh, when was that you guys? July? Uh, August. Anyway, it's back in stock. Um, and so we're going to, um, we're going to replicate Connie's card. We're going to make a couple little changes to it just because of products that I have on hand. And then a couple of you, of you have said that when I put the um, the measurements on the screen, depending on what device you're looking on uh, at, they are um, the witch's feet boots. Yeah, that's what we did last year was the swinging feet. So super cute. Oh, a monkey. Oh, a swinging monkey would be super cute, Mary. You guys are so clever. So clever. Um, so um, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought. It'll come back to me. Anyway, we're gonna we're gonna replicate this card. So let's go ahead and what was I gonna say, you guys? Oh my goodness, Susan, I'm losing my mind. All right, so we're gonna use this um, so very merry stamp. So I have put um, I have put the um, the stamp. I'm gonna use the same one that Connie used, and that's this. Um, so this is like they're like stained glass. They're really cool. The bird is absolutely adorable stamped. I've seen some super cute things with that. Gingerbread house, the, the bells. Um, and then we have the angel and then the Santa. We're going to do the Santa. So um, let's go ahead and, oh, I know what I was saying. <laughs> some of you had said that when I show the measurements on the screen, it's just a little too small for you to see. It's, it's too tiny, especially if you're on a phone or an iPad. Um, so I'm going to, yes, thank you, Leslie. It came... <laughs> came back to me. You guys are paying attention. Oh my gosh. All right. 
I, maybe my brain is not back from Las Vegas yet. Um, so I typed them out and I'm going to put them on the screen at the ends um, with the card. And I'm hoping that that will be easier to read. We'll see. Jennifer also, if you're watching on YouTube, Jennifer is also dropping them in the comments as we go. Assuming I gave her the right dimensions, which hmm, anybody's guessed tonight. So, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get started and make this fun swing ornament. I was thinking you could also do a, um, like if you're, you're making it as an ornament, um, you could have this be a pine bow or something. I mean, so, so many fun options, right? <gasps> so many things we could do. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about photopolymer stamps and particularly when you are um, stamping photopolymer stamps in the Memento black ink. So the Memento uh, tuxedo black ink is a felt based pads pad. All of our other stamp pads are foam and the, these clear stamps ink up beautifully with the foam stamps. They're a little bit harder to ink with when you're using a, um, a felt pad. So I wanted to give you a couple tips about that. And I want to show you what I'm talking about. So when I just, I opened the stamp up, I put it on my block. What was the first one I stamped? I think it was this one I stamped first. Let me see if you can zoom in. If I, if you can see that, you can see how the ink didn't quite take down here at the edge. So I stamped it, I inked it up again and stamped it again. And it was still kind of blotchy and speckly. So what I did is I stopped and I cleaned my stamp off. And so when they make these photopolymer, they often have um, kind of oils from the machine on them and that can keep the ink from sticking. So if you're using a brand new photopolymer stamp and you have trouble with that ink, um, you know, not coming out like you want, stamp it a few times on a scrap paper, get it good and inky, stamp it and then clean it. And then you'll get a much better um, result. So this one in the middle, is the one that I stamped after cleaning it. So I'll just show you really quick. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just stamp it. And I do recommend with photopolymer um, to use a cushion if it's a solid stamp or if you're using um, a tuxedo black ink. So I'm actually gonna put my, my stamp face up and I'm gonna rub this felt pad all over it. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tap. And it's kind of squishy here. So I'm gonna, I wanna, I wanna press good and hard. I just really wanna load this up with black ink. Now with these um, stained glass uh, type uh, images, you also could do um, black embossing powder and that would be absolutely gorgeous. So there you can see we got a really good crisp image because that stamp had been inked up a few times and then cleaned off. Now this one I just stamped and we're going to be coloring with some um, Stampin' Blends. So I'm actually going to use this one that I stamped about 20 minutes ago because it's a little drier and it's not going to um, bleed on me. Now this stamp set, which again, this is you can find this if you go to um, the online store. If you, whether you're shopping with me or if you're a demonstrator shopping with yourself to get the discount, um, you're going to go ahead and um, find this under the menu and then click on online exclusives. And that's where you'll find the So Very Merry, where it happens to perfectly match the two and three eighths inch circle punch, which is in the annual catalog. It's just a little bit larger. It gives you a nice white border. I'm just making sure. <laughs> Does that look even, you guys? I'm not really even sure. We'll find out. We're just going to go for it. All right. That looks pretty even. I, I can live with that. So I've got my, my Santa all ready to color here. And uh, oh, you rub an eraser over it, Janine, and that helps um, get those oils off of it. Good. good. Another good tip. Thank you. All right. I'm going to grab a scrap paper here. And we do want to color this um, for our project. So we're just going to dive right in and we'll get this colored. I, I love Connie's coloring. I'm going to copy, copy, copy. <laughs> she was so kind to, she actually um, came looking for me, which was fabulous. Um, and, uh, and shared this great card with me because she knew how much I loved her card last year that she made. So it looks to me like she did Night of Navy Blends. So that's what I have out here. 
I don't know if she used light or dark. I'm guessing she used the dark one, but let's, let's do a little experimenting and find out. Now, of course, you could also go with, um, okay, that's the light. I don't know, that is actually pretty dark, isn't it? I might go with the light. Let's see what the dark one looks like. Um, I think they're pretty close, actually. It is a little bit darker. Yeah, I think she used the light. All right, I'm going to go back to the light. I can always add some dark if I want. If I want, You also could, with this, um, this style of stamp, you could um, do the darks and lights in the different patches of the stained glass, if that makes sense. Where those lines are, you could do light, dark, light, dark. Go back and forth there. So I am just using the wide end of my Stampin' Blend marker. Now the Stampin' Blends are an alcohol-based marker, and that's why you need to use them with this particular ink pad. I'm trying to make sure I don't color his hat because, you know, Santa does not have a navy hat. I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that would be a no-no. <laughs> Could this be on vellum to get a better stained glass effect? Ooh, that's a fun idea. Um, the only drawback with vellum for this particular card, um, you'd have to put something behind it, right? So that our mechanism doesn't show that makes it swing. But if you were just doing the, um, you know, the, the, just making a card that doesn't have a mechanism behind it, absolutely that would work. Or you could do it on vellum and then layer it on something, right? All right, I'm getting nervous. I'm getting close to his schnoz, <laughs> his nose and his beard so I'm actually I don't know how well you can see this but I'm leaving a little bit of white space uh, by his nose I'll go back in with the fine tip and uh, get that close because I don't want to I don't want to give him a blue nose I guess he could be cold though right <laughs> all right so let me just get the fine tip so I switch to the other end of the marker and just going in there. All right, awesome. Got that all done. And then I don't know if you can tell, but Connie did, let's see if you can see it. She put Wink of Stella all over hers, which is very pretty. All right, so now we need to do his uh, hat. So I'm thinking real red. What do you guys think? Let's see. Can I find the real, oh, I found the real red, hallelujah right where it was supposed to be all right so this is the light real red mm, no nope, too pink i'm gonna go with the dark that's better you could also do like a cherry cobbler and that might actually be what she did mine looks a little bright doesn't it comparing these two maybe connie did cherry cobbler let's see Grab the light cherry cobbler and give it a go here. See what we think. That cherry cobbler. Yep, that's cherry cobbler. Yeah, I think that's what she did is cherry cobbler. Um, all right, well, let's just change it. You know what? I think she has the directions on the back of the card. Perhaps I should have looked at that. <laughs> that would have been a good idea. Will the Stampin' Blends hold color on acetate? Uh, mm, wow, good question. Let me think about that for a second. Will they hold on acetate? They're alcohol-based. Um, yeah, they should, actually. Um, that would, I think, work. You wouldn't be able to use a regular marker because it, it needs paper to soak into. But this one, mm, I haven't tried it. Uh, some of our friends here might have, though. Some of our, our creative crafters that are watching. Anyone know the answer to that question? Okay. Now, I went a little bit over the line on... Um, oh, look. I've colored myself. <laughs> oh, it's so messy. Um, so I crossed over the line a little bit here. Um, this is his sack of toys. But that's okay, because we're going to be coloring that with... Um, Looks like she did, I'm going to say that almost looks like Mossy Meadow. Let's try it. Um, or we could also do Old Olive. This is the light Mossy Meadow. Oh, goodness. Got marker on me, you guys. Jeez. Can't take me anywhere, can we? All right, let's see what the light Mossy Meadow looks like. 
yeah, that, um, that looks pretty good. Let's try it. There we go. I, I have kind of mashed my tip on this one. I use this one a lot. <laughs> And so it's, uh, I was a little rough on it. So I'm going to go to the fine tip area because I really don't want green on his, the white part of his hat or any of these um, white parts. And then I want to add some extra ink to that area where I had that little boo-boo and I uh, put red on the bag. So the beauty of the blends is they actually just can blend. You can blend two completely different colors and um, kind of eradicate any boo-boos or make your own colors by mixing them. So because this is a darker color, I'm able to just kind of color right over that red where I crossed the line. And there we have Santa's bag full of toys. I don't know what color that bag is. Could have probably done it in a lighter color too, like a crumb cake. But I really like the colors that Connie chose here. They're just very rich and regal colors. So um, stamp the image and stays on and then color the back side of it with of acetate with the blends. Yes, I think that would work. Um, you can't color the front side because um, stays on and blends don't play nicely, but you're absolutely right. You could do it on the back. Let me know. Give it a try. Please let us know. Report back. Um, I don't know what color his face is. Um, let's see what light petal pink looks like. I think that's... Um, she might have used one of the skin tone ones. I'm going to just go with the light petal pink. So I'm changing that up a little bit. Of course, you could use whatever skin tone you want. All right, there we go. So I've got his face colored. And let's hold that up so we can see that. Awesome. Look how much fun I had. <laughs> Pulling markers right and left. Let's just check them over in the corner, shall we? Sure. Why not? All right. So we've got our bit colored here. Now we're going to build out our card. So I see that I have all my little scraps here. Um, I need a sentiment. I need a sentiment, you guys. So uh, Connie used the Tis the Season to be Jolly from the stamp set. That seems like a good thing to go with Jolly Old St. Nick. So let me grab that. And I'm going to put this on a block. And then I'm going to stamp it. Is that? That was white. Yeah, okay. I'm going to stamp it in Night of Navy. I thought maybe I got it out, but I didn't. Here's the Night of Navy ink pad. So let's stamp our... Oh, that was squeaky. Sorry. Squeaky ink pad. I think Connie did hers in black, which you certainly could do. But like I mentioned, sometimes it's a little harder to get good ink coverage um, with the black ink. So, or maybe it's just really dark. Uh, no, I think she did do it in Night of Navy. It just looks really dark when you stamp it. So, all right. Very good. We are off. We're doing good here. So, um, all right. Yeah, don't loan him any of your Sharpies if he's a tip smasher, Janine. Mm. Apparently, I was a tip smasher with my Mossy Meadows. So, all right. So, it's a good thing I get that demonstrator discount when I'm not nice to my toys, right? Because then I can just use my discount to get more. I'm going to set this aside here, and we're going to bring in a paper trimmer. And I've got a little bit of foil from our last project. Um, and some cardstock. So we're going to go with Knight of Navy here, and I'm going to cut that at five and a half inches. All right, and then I'll score this one at four and a quarter. So I'll slide my cutting blade up and go ahead and crease that, four and a quarter. All right, so we've got our card base that is eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. 
And then we're going to grab a piece of basic white. We actually need two pieces that are four by five and a quarter. One we're gonna emboss for the front and one we're gonna put on the inside. Now you might be saying, Susan, there wasn't any embossing on this card. And you are correct, there was not. There was some designer series paper, but I thought it might be fun to make some do some embossing because you guys know how much I love my embossing, right? All right, we're gonna go five and a quarter by four, one for the inside layer, one for the front. All right. Okay. And then one other piece I want to cut while I have the trimmer out. I like to kind of maximize the a tool when I have it out, if that makes sense. Um, we're going to cut a piece of Night of Navy that's three by four and a quarter. Again, I'm changing this slightly from Connie. She used the countryside corner dies um, for this layer. And so I'm hoping, oh gosh, that looks skinny. Hang on, hold on, hold the phone. No, that's right. Um, by four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Right there. Okay. All right. I think, I think we're done with the trimmer. Let's set it aside. And I keep bumping my, have I not lost anything tonight? What is, who even am I? <laughs> Sorry, you all are getting so probably getting thirsty out there. Oh my goodness. All right, I'll try to lose something here in a little bit. All right, so we're going to emboss this with this new uh, snowflake embossing folder. Uh, Jennifer probably knows the name of it. It's in the new mini catalog. I think it's in the bundle that has the white bears in it. I'm blanking out on the name. It is a 3D embossing folder. And the top of it, if you can see, has um, less concentration. You're so thirsty. <laughs> oh, Carol, you crap me up. Crack me up. That's so funny. Uh, oh, you. Oh, we did have one found it for the red, the red blend marker. Okay, good. Whew. All right. Um, so there's less concentration of snow at the top and a heavier concentration at the bottom. If you're watching me for the first time, um, I, I'm a messy crafter, friends, as you can see by this red mark on my <laughs> finger. Um, and I often lose things when I'm stamping because I get all excited and I go creating and I, yeah, I'm a messy stamper. So um, when I lose something and we find it again, we say found it and we all take a sip of our beverage. So it's just something that makes something that's kind of frustrating a little more fun, right? All right, I'm very going to carefully set these guys somewhere. <laughs> There's never enough room, is there? Never enough room. All right, so I have my die cutting machine set up for die cutting, but I don't need it for die cutting. So let's take that off. So we have the stamp and cut emboss machine. We've got platform number one, and then we have that uh, snowflake embossing folder. So we just need one other thing. When you order the machine, you get um, a gray uh, plate that is thicker. Hold on. Can't find it. <laughs> Well, what the heck did I, oh, I found it. Here it is. I thought I brought it over and then I couldn't find it. Found it, friends. Take a sip of your beverage. Oh my goodness. All right, there, found it number two. All right, we're gonna crank this baby through. I thought I left it across the room. I didn't, it was over here. It just was under stuff. <laughs> I can't even crank the handle because I've got more stuff here. All right, there we go. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, <gasps> so exciting. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. So Connie, on her cute card, she used a designer series paper. This is a new one. She's got the uh, everything for us on the back here. So let's see what that one is called. Um, Snowflake Magic is the name of the paper. So that must be from the new mini. Um, but we're going to do our own Snowflake Magic with the embossing folder for our layer on our card. So we're going to put this on. Okay, make sure I'm doing this right, friends how how would it be? Would the lighter concentration of snow be at the top coming from the sky? Or would the heavier concentration of snow be at the top coming from the sky and it gets lighter as it comes down? Oh my goodness. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you're not late, Linda. You're right. You're here right when you're supposed to be here, right? Um, let me know in the comments what direction, what the heck direction Heavier at the top or bottom? I don't know. I don't know. We, 
Does it matter? Probably not. Am I overthinking this? Probably am. All right, we're gonna grab um, our die cutting set up here. And we're gonna go lighter at the top, lighter at top, bottom is piling up. Ah, uh, got you lighter at the top. Okay, good to know. But I think it could go either way, right? Like some of you are saying you always do heavy at the top. So I guess it's personal preference. All right, so we're gonna do our die cutting sandwich, which is platform number one, platform number two, and then, um, or it's a thin die adapter, I guess I call it. And then the number three plate, I put my scarred up one on the bottom. And then we're gonna grab that sentiment that we stamped and we're gonna die cut that. Um, I don't 100% know uh, what die Connie used on hers. So we're gonna use a different one. <laughs> uh, we're gonna use one of the tags. Whoa, the tailor made tags. Let's see if we've got one here that will fit our greeting. See, that one seems a little on the biggish side. But this one seems like it might be a little bit on the smaller side. So they're, they're nested dies. There's two different types. So let me see. Ooh, ooh, that's like perfect, isn't it? Okay, we're gonna do that one. So there are four um, that are that have kind of this fancy edge at the top and there are four that are kind of more squared off corners, if you will. And then we have this. This is to make little reinforcers. Um, for the tags, you can do a kind of a, so I could do like a navy reinforcer on this. Um, and then these are reinforcers for this type of tag. But we're going to use this reinforcer a different way to make our mechanism. So I actually think, hang on, let me look at Connie's card again. Um, I'm going to put the hole for my tag off to the left. All right, so I'm going to put a post-it note on that so that that does not move. The bottom of the folder has the line, so how that is how the folder, uh, the snow is on the folder. Mm. Well, that makes sense. All right, let's go ahead and put this down. I'm wondering how many people that we gift our wonderful cards to would even notice, right, <laughs> right, friends? <laughs> but we debate about these things, and then it's like. This. Does it really matter? Probably not. I'm overthinking it. All right, so I'm going to um, set aside my tag dies, but I pulled out this one that makes the little reinforcers, and we're going to use this to make our mechanism for our card. So Connie had in her, her directions here that she used a two inch by half inch strip of uh, white to make the, or any color, I suppose, um, to make the dimension, and I very carefully cut it. Ah, uh, you guys, my desk ate it. What the heck? Hang on, hold the phone. Seriously, it was just here. I had it right on top of this. Oh, Susan, what are we gonna do with me, Jennifer? I do not know. Um, did I set it over here? Is this it? Oh, I think I found it. Found it. I don't know how I got over there, but <laughs> this looks right. So we're gonna use this. All right, so um, two by half inch. And then we're gonna use this to cut a circle in one end. And so if you look at this die, this is again, the tailored tags die. Um, now, if you have a half inch circle punch, you could use that instead or any other circle shaped die that's this small. Um, can you see that this die has one hole in the center and then it has two little ejection holes on each side? So when I turn it over, each circle has a, a large hole in the center and a small one on each side. So that kind of is a guide for me to see um, where the edge of my circle is. And if, uh, if I cut a little bit of the next circle into my thing, um, I, I don't really care. This is not gonna show. Um, it's just our mechanism that's gonna make the swinging part happen. So, um, and I think Connie used a half inch circle punch on hers. We currently don't have one um, in the, the, in our offering. So I wanted to uh, use a product that for those of you that don't happen to have one of those um, would be able to get so that you could re, do, re you know, recreate this card. All right, hang on. I oh, found it. <laughs> I'm gonna find the clear top plate cause it's clear, right? So it was under the tag dice. All right, that's our third found. Let's take another sip, everyone. 
All right, I have gotten such a mess on my desk. I don't even know if I can turn this handle. I'm gonna shove things to the right and hope nothing falls off the edge of my desk. Oh, okay, we're gonna crank this through and see how we go. All right, now I went pretty far down with those little circles. And so I'm pretty sure I've caught the next circle um, on the top of my tag and, and I'm okay with that. So um, let's pull this off. Let's see what we have here. All right, so we've got our Tis the Season to be Jolly right here. So that's going to be at the top of our card. This also is going to serve a, another purpose in that it's going to um, hide the mechanism. So we've got that. I'm going to set that aside. And then we've got our mechanism. So as you can see, oh, I got a little tiny bit of the circle above it and I'm totally fine with that. Again, that's not going to show. And it's like, is our fourth, fourth uh, found it? Probably. They're probably going to start coming <laughs> more frequently now. So I can pop this out and I can show you what the real purpose of this die is. It's to make a little reinforcer, right? Um, but we're using it to make our mechanisms. So let's go ahead and clear the deck. Now I certainly could have done one in navy as well. Um, where can I set this? Oh my gosh, you guys. Things are going to fall. Oh, okay. It's all right. It's all good. It's all good. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm crafting in a tiny little square because I've got so much stuff on my desk. And that's kind of how we roll, isn't it? Unfortunately, that's just how we roll. I've got um, my uh, trimmer on my uh, cutter is a little needs to be replaced. So I'm going to just cut off a little bit of that um, fuzz on the side. I think some of you have, have mentioned that you use like a sanding block for that. All right, so what do we decide on the folder? <laughs> um, yeah, so if this is the bottom of the folder, you're right. The heavier is at the bottom because it's piling up as we snow. So we'll go with that. Again, doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. So this is going to be the, the base of our card, and this is four by five and a quarter. I'm actually going to put my adhesive, show you Sue, on the card itself. instead of on the embossed piece because sometimes when you emboss especially with the 3d it kind of changes the paper and it could sometimes rip so all right heavy at the bottom got it all right there we go there's our snowfall a nail file works for fuzz oh good 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 um oh you like my nail polish thanks joe <laughs> All right, and then we're going to go with this one on top as our layer. It's actually going to cover up a lot of our snow. That's okay. Um, and then this is going to go at the top. What have I got here? Oh, it's a, it's a Susan hair. We don't need that on our cart. <clears throat> That's something I didn't need to find. <laughs> All right, so mapping out our card here. So let's see. If I can kind of flip this over, we can take a peek at what Connie did. So she glued the bottom part of that um, tab to her Santa. And then it's um, that part that swings is, is going to be up here behind the tag, right? So we're going to start by taking a, I'm going to just kind of map this out. We're going to take a full size dimensional. Actually, is that going to be too big? Let's check it with my hole. Mm, that's too big. All right. We're going to take a mini. <laughs> we're going to take a mini dimensional. There we go. Now we're cooking. And we're going to put that in the circle. Okay. So I'm not sticking the dimensional to the circle. The whole point of the circle is it's going to swing on the edge of the dimensional. Okay. So I'm not, I want this loose so that it, it can um, make our ornament swing, right? So I've got that all set. I'm also going to put some dimensionals on the back of my tag. Now, I don't want this to interfere with the dimensionals. So I'm going to put them, I'm going to use again minis because they're smaller. And I'm going to put them way out on the edge. 
And before I stick this on, I think I might want, gosh, I hope this works. <gasps> I hope it works, you guys. Uh, I think I might want a ribbon in the hole because, you know, ribbons. I love ribbons. So we've got a couple of options. I would love your feedback here. We've got this beautiful bordered ribbon that would go quite nicely with our project. It's kind of shiny. Or, hold on. We have this new ribbon that is called, it's going to be in the upcoming mini catalog, which starts on September 6th. This is the Knight of Navy and Gold ribbon. Um, and that looks like that. So it's got a lot of gold in it. Hang on, let me bring it up so you can see it a little closer. There's the gold. Or here is the bordered. Which one do you think we should use? Let me know in the comments. Somebody is saying a new ribbon. So if I use the new ribbon, I think I would actually just tie a bow and stick it on instead of trying to thread it through because it is quite thick. Oh my gosh, you guys, what do I do with my ribbon scissors? Oh, seriously. <gasps> seriously. I might have actually taken them with me on the trip because I was trimming some ribbon. Um at the hotel. I bet you I did. All right. Well, we'll try. This is not really a found it, but we found some that are not ribbon scissors and we're going to see if they'll cut and they do. Yay. Hurrah. All right. New ribbon, navy and gold, bordered ribbon, new ribbon, new ribbon, bordered. Mm, that's pretty, pretty split here. We're going to go, let's go with new. New is always fun. So right now it's August. It's the very end of August. We are August 29th today. Um, if you're watching this live or catching it on the same day, um, if you placed an order in July, you would have gotten a coupon from Stampin' Up! Uh, for a $50 order, you got a $5 coupon. Um, if you added another 50 to that, you got another $5 coupon. Um, August is the last time, the, the only time you can use those coupons. So I wanted to just remind you so that you don't miss out on those savings. So if you got some coupons um, last month, make sure you use them. You know, this was really clever. I never stuck this down. So let's do that now. <laughs> uh, where did my seal? Well, here's Tin Seal Plus. Found it. I found some sticky. And so we'll use that. We're going to use Seal Plus. It now has a dog hair in it. Oh, goodness. And it just ran out. All right. So that's gone. Ah, here's the seal. <laughs> Right. Oh my goodness, you guys. All right. Take a couple drinks for that fiasco. All right. Let's go ahead and pop this on the card. And I'm just centering it. This piece of navy is three inches by four and a quarter. And then we have our little two inch by half inch piece that's going to go right here. And I'm going to pull the, pull the pin on the grenade there. I'm pulling the back off of that dimensional. Again, I don't want the paper. I don't want this to stick to that paper. It's just going to swing on it. I want this to stick on that. And you can see that I've um, only put dimensionals on the far outside edges because I don't want the, them to interfere with the swing of our piece. So let's give it a little press in the middle and let's see if it swings. Yay, it swings. Hurrah. <laughs> And so now we can attach our, um, our ornament to that. And Connie kind of tucked it right under here so that you couldn't see that arm. Um, so we'll probably do the same. Should we add Wink of Stella to our, um, to our Santa like Connie did? Let me know in the comments. And while you are, are deciding on that, um, I'm going to get these ribbons out of our way. So I have a little bit more space to work in and I'm getting super nervous that I have not put this little die away. Hang on. Um, I'm, I have a free gift that I'm giving this month because it's my 26th anniversary. If you place a $75 order, um, you get a little magnetic dish so you can put dies like this in it. Unfortunately, all of mine are downstairs. <laughs> so I'm going to stick it back on the magnet sheet. That would have been perfect goodness. All right. So we've got this going here. Um, let's see. Yes on the wink. Yes to the wink. Always need some shimmer. All right. Okay. Let's, let's add a little wink of Stella here to make that stained glass sparkle, right? 
Um, do I have any Winko Stella? Well, of course I must. Hang on. Oh my goodness. All right. What has Susan done with her Winko Stella? How does this happen? How does this happen? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> oh my goodness, you are all very patient people, bless you. Okay, well, you know what? We have a brand new Wink of Stella. Let's see if we can get this going. I have no idea what I did with mine. I have multiples. They're probably just buried here. Hang on. Did they in with the blends or? Wow. All right. I guess I haven't used my Wink of Stella in a while. So we'll just crack open a new one. When you get the new Wink of Stella, um, you need to remove this little ring. It keeps the, um, the barrel from activating the uh, glitter inside and potentially drying up or whatever. So, and then you need to shake it. And then on the side, you've got the little push and you can kind of prime it. Ooh, it's making it, can you hear it? Listen, <laughs> it's making a, a squishy noise. That's, that's a good sign. There's something in there. All right, I'm just gonna grab a, um, so I can see it coming up the barrel. I'm so sorry, you guys, I didn't know where mine went. Well, this gives me an opportunity to share with you how to get a new Wink of Stella going. I'm priming it a whole bunch. I can see that there's stuff happening. It's going upwards. Just, oh, hello. <laughs> oh my goodness, all right. There it comes, there we go, yay. All right. <laughs> so let's add some Wink of Stella on here. So this is a, like a, sh it's like a glittery shimmery paint basically. I don't know how else to describe it, right? Oh, my goodness. I got a lot there. I, I kind of maybe overdid, didn't I? Oh, goodness. All right. Let's see if I can spread that around a little bit. Spread the joy. <sighs> see, this is maybe why I don't use Wink of Stella. Maybe I shouldn't be allowed to use it. I maybe over primed it a bit. Hang on. Let's take some of that off. That's all right. It's going to be super sparkly. Which is okay at Christmas time, right? Santa deserves a lot of magic sparkle around him. All right, there we go. Boy, did I wink a still of that baby. <laughs> super shimmery. Okay. Uh, oh my goodness. What I When I did that, it exploded and made a mess. Yeah, I might have overprimed it there a bit. Okay, so that is going to go right here. And I'm going to put some adhesive on right on that piece. And then I'm going to stick this on to it. And look at that, it swings just like it's supposed to. <laughs> your glue challenge, your, gl your glue challenge to Joan or glue challenger? Are you good at glue or do you struggle with it a little bit? So there we've got that. And now we're gonna add our ribbon on here just for a little extra sparkle. So let's get some glue dots on that. You know, I don't know if I want a bow, uh, hold on. Where did I put the ribbon, you guys? I shoved it out of the way. Oh, found it. I think this might be a little bit more than I want. Should we try a knot and see what that looks like? Let's try just a knot here. All right, so we're gonna pull this really tight. There we go. And and see what we think here. Just seemed a little heavy handed to me to have the whole bow. And you know what? Knots are a lot easier, especially if you're doing your Christmas cards. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the knot 
It's just a little bit skinnier. I'm going to actually cut this a wee bit shorter. Don't want it off the edge of my card. There we go. And let's grab our glue dot and pop that on. And now since it's just the knotted bow, it's a little easier to stick on with the glue dot. So there we have our ornament that swings back and forth. <laughs> you like the knot better? I do too. I do too. And then here is Connie's original version that didn't have exploding wink of still on it. <laughs> and then again, she used the, uh, what was it called? Snowflake Magic Designer Series paper for the background there. So, and then on the inside, and she used the countryside corners die on this, and I just did a square. Uh, but that gives you the idea of how this card was done. And of course, I'll need to do some some kind of sentiment on the inside, maybe Peace and Joy or Very Merry. Um, lots of good options in that stamp set. And not as easier for mailing too. You could do a, a red linen thread, sure. Or Papa Red would be cute, right? Oh, ooh. hold on, hold the phone, friends. <laughs> we also have this ribbon. This is actually in the online exclusives, or at least it, if it didn't sell out, um, it was in the online exclusives. So if you prefer to pop a red, you could have totally done that. It's kind of fun with the gold um, little circles on it. It makes it very good for the holidays, right? So, or plain red would also work. All right, I'm going to put the dimensions up here so you can take a screenshot of this. <laughs> oh, 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 you can see my mess. <laughs> it's pretty hard not to see my mess right now, I got to say. All right, so let's, let's tidy. Let's tidy my mess. And let's see if I can even get it on here. Yes, I can. All right, I got Connie's name on there because she was totally the inspiration behind this card. I don't know. It still might. Um, oh, the ribbon looked orange online. Oh, hmm. well, it's it's definitely red. I'm going to just lower the camera so that print is a little bit bigger. How does that look, friends? Is that all right? So you can take a screenshot there and get that... Um, that information. So the mechanism is the half inch by two. And then um, we will do a, uh, we'll have to do some more swinging cards, right? We'll have to do a few more swinging cards. Yay. <laughs> All right. Um, I have a few swap cards to share with you. Um, if you have to go, I totally understand. But if you can hang around for a few more minutes, what time are we? Oh, we're going over. All right, we're going to just go. I'm not going to, I'll, I'll show some tonight and then I'll show some others um, in the next video. I'm going to just grab a handful <laughs> of swap cards and we'll take a look together. I honestly have not had time to look at these, so we'll be looking at them together. This first one, oh my gosh, you guys, such a mess. This first one is from Demonstrator Liz, uh, Liz Shannon, uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth's Craft Room. She's in the United Kingdom. And she made us a pin. How fun is that? This is with the crafting, um, crafting with you bundle that has a cute little paper trimmer right in it. So she made it to match our, our theme there with the backstage. And so that is from Liz Shannon. Super fun. This one is from my friend Nancy Thompson. And oh, hang on. She's got all the dimensions for us and everything. This is the inked and tile. This is a fun fold. I think we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to replicate this fun fold, friends. So we've got a designer paper. So you can see both sides there. That flap folds down and then this piece opens. So it's kind of like a joy card, but um, you could, oh, a detached ornament to hang on a tree. Mm, boy, I don't know. That one might be a little complicated for me, but you can make another ornament and have it inside or packaged with it, right? Um, so this is a fun fold from Nancy, um, Nancy Thompson, who is in uh, New York. And so we'll definitely have to uh, create with Nancy.com is her website. We'll have to recreate this with some different papers. That's a really fun fold. I'll put that in our stash. Um, this card is from um, Jody Carlson from Utah. 
And Jody used the new Memories and More cards. This is the Berry Christmas Memories and More. So if you want to make holiday cards, but you don't have time to do um, do a, a whole lot of uh, creating, this these Memories and More cards make it really easy. So these are, um, you actually buy the card base with the envelope and the pattern uh, thing on it. So this is the card base. And then you just adhere the card of your choice right on the card. It's super simple. And um, it's uh, a great way to, you know, during the holidays, get a lot of cards out, spread some joy, spread some kindness, but um, can still maximize on your time there. And then she made it super fancy. Oh, you know what? We forgot one thing on our card, didn't we? Um, so she added a, a gem on Santa's hat there. So I will have to add that in, um, after the fact. So uh, this one has lots of gems on it, some fun ribbon here, just to, so it's still got some extra special things happening, but it's a great way to use those um, Memories of More cards. And the Christmas ones do tend to sell out. So on September 6th, um, that might be something you wanna get sooner rather than later. This card is super cute. Look at that pretty peacock. You are amazing. Uh, no name on this swap, darn it. Um, nothing in the envelope. So, oh, I guess I pulled off the, uh, the ribbon on that. Oops. Um, so I don't know who made this, but it's super cute. Here is one with the new, um, this is from, oh, Jill Olson. Jill Olson has been a demonstrator for a very long time, a very, very long time. And so it's fun to get a swap from Jill absolutely gorgeous um, she actually used the pre-printed cards and she cut them down and used it as a layer and then these beautiful nativity dies that are in the catalog again those start on uh, September 6th and Jill does she have her website on here I think it's stampingwithjill.com there we go and let's see this next one is oh this is with the darling details Super cute card here. Look how fun that is. I love the layering detail there. And this one, oh, again, no name. Oh my goodness. All right, if you're a demonstrator and you, you make swaps, put your name on it so I can give you a shout out. So uh, this next one is from Sue Kramer in Woodbury, Minnesota. And this one is with the Pick of the Patch bundle. This is a new one that's coming in the mini that starts September 6th. And this one has a punch, um, I believe, to punch out the different uh, pumpkins. So super cute card from Sue Kramer. Adorable. All right, we got, we got just a couple more and then we'll save the rest for next time. How's that sound, friends? I know you probably, I haven't eaten dinner yet. You guys may not have either, so I don't want to keep you too long here. Um, this one is c to c Stamping and Paper Crafts, Melissa Thomas. And this is Melissa's card. Looks like she did a note card with envelope. Super cute with the um, masterfully made designer series paper. Really pretty. And then this one is another note card with envelope. Oh, also from uh, Melissa Thomas. Whoops, I ended up getting two of hers. I'm not sure how that happened because um, I only had one swab. So this one is also with the masterfully made. Super cute. And then one more with the delightful details actually. Um, let's pull that out in the Delightfully Eclectic Designer Service Paper. And this one is from Robin Daus, D-A-U-S, and um, uh, Stamp with Dr. Robin is her YouTube chan channel. And this is a fun fold card. Oh, look, friends, we got a fun fold card. So it opens up like that pops open and we've got some designer paper here. That is super fun. So her website is uh, Stamp with Dr. Robin if you want to check that out. Super, super fun. So, all right, I'm going to call it there. Hold card still for a screenshot. Okay, I'm holding still. We'll have to, I think we need to make this, don't you guys think? And I'll hold it up like this. Hold it still. All right, there we go. Any others that you want me to bring back for a screenshot? I, I am wiggly. It's true. True story. <laughs> Let's see. Here, I'll pop that one there for a minute. 
let's pull them back through. It does look like fun, doesn't it? Here is the Darling Details one. Oh, do the nativity and hold that one still? You bet. All right, let's grab that one. There's the old holy night. I'll get my hand out of there. Even better, right? So you can take a screenshot of that. All right, friends. Let's we're gonna call it right there. I'm gonna switch the camera to right here. Yay! Thank you all so much. Thank you for making and sending handmade cards. Together, we're making the world a kinder place. I appreciate all that you do. Take care, everyone. Have a great night. I will be back Saturday evening at 7.30 Central Time with some more creative fun. And a quick reminder that um, the Project Sheet email went out today. And if you are not subscribed to that, you can go ahead and subscribe here. You'll get a welcome email that will have those same two fun folds um, in the, uh, the project sheets right in that welcome email. And then you'll be all set for future emails. So take care, everyone. Have a great night, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.